One of the questions idiomatic to classical quantitative modeling asks, how fast is the system changing right now? The concept of right now corresponds to a single moment, but change is evaluated by comparing the system's conditions at distinct times separated by finite intervals. The concept of a limit will be useful in future modules when we need to relate concepts defined intrinsically in terms of an instance in time with concepts intrinsically defined in terms of finite time intervals. We will present the definition of the limit of a function, the definition of improper limits, and the definition of limits at infinity. Sometimes limits don't exist. We will close with a worked example. We read this notation as, the limit as x goes to p of f on x is l. It means that as x becomes arbitrarily close to p, f on x becomes arbitrarily close to l. Mathematical notes are sometimes written in shorthand. The upside down a is read, for all. The backwards e is pronounced, there exists. The s dot t dot is short for, such that. And the double struck arrow is short for, implies. Unpacked and converted into standard English, these symbols together mean, for all positive epsilon, there exists a positive delta such that confining x to between p minus delta and p, and between p and p plus delta, implies that f on x is also confined to between epsilon above and below y equals l. We plot f on x versus x for some generic function. The golden circle marks the point x equals p, y equals l. Is L, in fact, the limit of f on x as x approaches p? We shade the vertical range between L plus and minus epsilon and ask whether we can choose a positive delta to identify a pair of domains, one between x equals p minus delta and p, and the other between x equals p and p plus delta, within which the yellow curve is assured to remain vertically within the green band? These red bands, not including the dashed red lines at precisely x equals p minus delta, x equals p, and x equals p plus delta, are together an example to the affirmative. In this notational convention, a dashed line means exclusion from a shaded region, while a solid line means inclusion. For this narrower band of green corresponding to a smaller epsilon, we can still find a delta, which is now smaller, to define red horizontal domains within which the yellow plot of f on x versus x remains vertically within the green band. Even after epsilon and thus the green band shrinks again, we can still continue to identify yet another delta with corresponding domains of red shading within which the yellow plot of f on x versus x remains vertically contained within the green band. If we can continue this process and always find a finite delta, no matter how small we have chosen finite epsilon, then L is, in fact, the limit as x approaches p of f on x. Can L still be the limit of f on x as x approaches p if, as illustrated, f on p itself does not equal L? Please pause the video to consider. Yes, L can be the limit of f on x as x approaches p, even if f on p itself is not equal to L. Observe in the formal definition in unpacked English that the point x equals p is excluded from the collections of values of x where we are trying to confine f on x vertically to a range between L plus and minus epsilon. As spoken toward the end of slide 3, the point x equals p, represented by a red dashed vertical line, is not part of the red shaded domain in which we are trying to confine f on x versus x to stay within the green band. The red shaded domains in which we are trying to confine f on x versus x vertically are non-contiguous. They are, on the left hand side, the interval between p minus delta and p, and on the right hand side, the interval between p and p plus delta. Some functions have plots f on x versus x that become arbitrarily large. For these situations, we need to define improper limits. This notation reads, the limit as x approaches p of f on x is infinity, roughly meaning that as x becomes arbitrarily close to p, f on x becomes arbitrarily large. The symbolic shorthand and unpacked English here again mean the same thing. For all positive m, there exists a positive delta such that confining x to between p minus delta and p, and between p and p plus delta, implies that f on x exceeds m. We draw a curve f on x that explodes. 
we are able to confine the yellow plot of f on x versus x to values of y greater than m by confining attention to two red domains. The one on the left-hand side is between p minus delta and p, and the one on the right-hand side is between p and p plus delta. For this larger value of m, we can still ensure that the yellow curves remain in the orange shaded region above the gold dashed line by choosing to confine attention now to a narrower pair of red shaded domains, again on both sides of x equals p. For an even larger value of m, we can ensure that the yellow curves remain in the orange shaded region above the gold dashed line by choosing to confine attention to this other pair of red shaded regions on both sides, again of x equals p. Suppose that we can continue to find finite values of deltas that prescribe red domains in which the plot of f on x remains in the orange shaded region no matter how big a finite number we allow m to equal. In this case, we say that the limit as x approaches p of f on x equals infinity. Write down the analogous vernacular, symbolic, and unpack English definitions for the notation that is read the limit as x approaches p of f on x is negative infinity. We just looked at a limiting process that involved moving through arbitrarily large numbers in the vertical direction. Next, we look at limits at infinity, which refer to a limiting process that involves moving through arbitrarily large numbers in the horizontal direction. The notation reading, the limit as x goes to infinity of f on x equals l, roughly means that as x becomes arbitrarily large, f on x becomes arbitrarily close to l. The shorthand symbols and unpacked English are synonymous. For all positive epsilon, there exists a positive s such that insisting that x exceed s implies that f on x is between epsilon above or below l. This plot of f on x versus x seems to flatten out for large values of x. We can ensure that the yellow plot of f on x versus x is confined to within the green band between l plus and minus epsilon by confining attention to values of x greater than s, the turquoise shaded region. We can also ensure that the yellow plot is vertically confined to within this narrower band of green by looking at the yellow plot only in the region where x is to the right hand side of this new s. The yellow plot remains within this very narrow region of green if we look only at values of x that are greater than this new value of s. Suppose we can name any finite epsilon, and no matter how small it is, no matter how thin the green band is, we can still find a value of s beyond which, to the right of which, we ensure that the yellow line is vertically contained by the green band. In this case, we say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f on x equals l. We just showed three definitions of limits that give a formal meaning to the notion or sentiment of approaching. Definition alone does not guarantee existence. Sometimes limits do not exist. In the following example, the limit as x approaches p of f on x will be dne, which means does not exist. The plot of f on x versus x corresponds to a perfectly good function. In the region illustrated, f on x always corresponds to a finite number. There are no funny vertical spikes. However, there is a jump at x equals p, where f on p equals the height of the golden marker, not the height of the empty circle below. Regardless of how small we choose delta to be, how narrow we choose to draw the red shaded domains on the left and right hand sides of x equal p, we will always capture a vertical range of values of f on x that is taller than the height of the green band illustrated. No matter at which height l we center the green band, we are unable to find a finite delta and corresponding red shaded intervals within which the yellow curves are vertically confined to the green band. No value of l satisfies the definition of the limit of a function as x approaches p, so the limit as x approaches p of f on x does not exist. In this second example, the limit as x goes to infinity of f on x is also dne, meaning again does not exist. Let's say that this curve continues to oscillate periodically with sustained amplitude as x increases. Along the x-axis, we fail to find any value of s, to the right of which we can guarantee that the yellow curve remains vertically confined within this illustrated green band. 
This is true regardless of whether we try to move the green band up or down the page, because the green band is narrower than the vertical trough to peak range of the oscillations. Since there is no value L at which we can center this green band and then find a value S to the right of which the yellow curve lies exclusively in the green band, the limit as x goes to infinity of f on x does not exist. When looking at a plot, we can often intuitively pick out the limit of a function as x approaches a point. In the following worked example, we will calculate the limit of a function more formally. We want to show that the limit as x approaches 1 of the function whose association rule is 2x, that that limit equals 2. The association rule 2x corresponds to a straight line. We draw a green horizontal line at y equals 2 and a red vertical line at x equals 1. Is it true that we can color in a green band centered around y equals 2 and find a value of delta that defines red shaded regions within which the yellow line remains vertically contained by the green band? And if so, is it true regardless of how thick or thin we make the green band? We want to show that for all positive epsilon there exists a positive delta such that confining x to two regions, one of them between 1 minus delta and 1, and the other between 1 and 1 plus delta, ensures that the quantity 2x deviates from the value 2 by a magnitude less than epsilon if it deviates at all. Consider some arbitrary positive value delta. The yellow arrow is plotted precisely at x equals 1 plus delta y max denotes a bound on values that f on x can take in the red shaded region. No value of f on x in the red shaded region is bigger than y max. In fact, since the point x equals 1 plus delta corresponds to a dashed vertical line, and is thus not actually part of the red shaded region, no value of f on x in the red shaded region even matches y max in height y max equals 2 times the quantity 1 plus delta, or 2 plus 2 delta. This shorter yellow arrow is plotted precisely at x equals 1 minus delta. Y min denotes another bound on values that f on x can take within the red shaded region. No value of f on x in the red shaded region is as small as y min. Y min equals 2 times the quantity 1 minus delta, or 2 minus 2 delta. The values of f on x in the red shaded region are between y max and y min. Pick some positive epsilon. Can we adjust delta so as to ensure that the plot of 2x versus x in the red shaded regions is less than epsilon away from the value 2? Yes, by insisting that y max and y min both reside within the green band. This is equivalent to insisting, in part, that the magnitude of the difference between y max and 2 be less than epsilon. The absolute value of 2 plus 2 delta, that quantity minus 2, is less than epsilon meaning that the absolute value of 2 delta is less than epsilon. We are also insisting that the magnitude of the difference between y min and 2 be less than epsilon. The absolute value of 2 minus 2 delta, that quantity, minus 2, is less than epsilon, meaning that the absolute value of negative 2 delta is less than epsilon. Both conditions on this line correspond to the equation 2 delta is less than epsilon. In other words, delta is less than epsilon over 2. If we have a positive epsilon, and then if we also choose some value of delta less than half epsilon, we ensure that the values of the yellow curve 2x versus x within the red shaded domains is vertically confined to within the green band. Since this confinement works for any finite epsilon, big or small, we say that the limit as x approaches 1 of the function whose association rule is 2x, we say that that limit is 2.